sister in the central region of South Africa shout out from the edge ministry in New Jersey New York woo, woo. greetings central region of the Johannesburg Church of Christ may God continue to bless your congregation good evening family uh, what a wonderful evening we have uh, today and we've got a special special guest uh, in Rayola Osanya who is from the New Jersey Church uh, which is part of the New York City Church of Christ, uh, who's going to be inspiring us and teaching us uh, from the Word of God this evening. Let's open our hearts as Rayola Osanya preaches to us. Amen. Central Region of the Johannesburg Church of Christ, Saubona. Please accept greetings from those you saw earlier. They are members of the Singles Ministry of the New Jersey Region of the New York City Church of Christ. My wife and I are privileged to work with the singles in this region and to provide some shepherding, and it's truly a great joy for us. Personally for me, I am really humbled by the invitation to speak to the amazing and awesome central region. And so I want to say a big thank you to Mfundo and to Rodwell and your lovely wives. Thank you so much for this opportunity and this invitation, and more so, Thank you so much for the leadership that you provide and your leadership here in Central, your leadership in Johannesburg, and indeed throughout South Africa. Thank you so much for your love and your leadership. And so Central Region, you might be asking, so who is this person who is uh, uh, speaking to us this evening? And so let me just give you a bit of background. I was baptized in the New York City Church. My late mother is from New York City. I was born in New York City. And like I said, I was born again in New York City. My late father is from Kenya, which is the most beautiful country in Africa. Now, some of you might be disagreeing. Now, you're not disagreeing that my father is from Kenya because there there's no debate. But maybe you're disagreeing about the verdict that Kenya is the most beautiful country in Africa. And you might be saying, no, it's South Africa. South Africa is the most beautiful country in Africa. Well, it's okay. If that's your opinion, it's okay to be wrong sometimes. Anyway, I'm just joking. That is not wrong. Indeed, the entire continent of Africa is colorful, wonderful, and truly beautiful. I was a teenager when I was baptized in New York City and also still a teenager when I accepted the call to be part of the mission team that was going from New York to Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. And um, I agreed to be part of that team and to go out. And so I discontinued my university studies in the US and ended up completing university in Nairobi. Later on, I was privileged uh, to serve God in the full-time ministry and I did so in uh, both, you know, full-time ministry, also mission work in Ethiopia, in Rwanda, and in various parts of Kenya, first as a single man, and then later after I got married. And here is a picture of my family. We took this picture just a few days ago. And so you who are here this evening are the 
first people to see this picture. This is a global exclusive, hot off the press. No one else has seen this picture before. And so on the right is my wife. Her name is Georgianne. And then in between us is our son, Paul. So it's the three of us, myself, my wife, and our son. Now, Georgianne, my wife, was the 12th person baptized in the church in Nairobi after the uh, planting there took place. And uh, then my son, or our son, he is uh, just wrapping up high school. He has about a month left. He became a disciple in 2019. And so this here is my home team, my queen, my teen, and together we are a team. After serving the full-time ministry for a number of years, Georgiana and I transitioned to working for Hope Worldwide Kenya. In fact, in my wife's role with Hope Worldwide, she would come travel from Kenya to Johannesburg twice a year for, for training. So she's somewhat familiar with uh, Johannesburg. Uh, for me, during that period, I only came to South Africa once. I was uh, attending a conference in, uh, in Durban. And I can say that I was in Durban long enough to discover that South Africa is the most beautiful country in Africa. Eventually, I decided to return to my birthplace, which is also my rebirth place. And so since 2008, my family and I have been living just outside New York City in the great state of New Jersey. And my wife and I, we have secular jobs. Uh, she's um, a high school or secondary school science teacher. You know, I work, um, uh, well, part-time I teach. I also do teach part-time in one of the universities. And then I work uh, as well full-time in, in New York City. And within the church, we are very privileged. We are very humbled to work with the singles ministry and hence the greetings earlier on from some of the wonderful single uh, women and men that we have a privilege and the privilege to work with. So let's jump into the scriptures now. That's uh, kind of a background of who I am. I'm just excited to be here. It's, it's wonderful to fellowship with the central region. And so let's jump into the scriptures. And let's look at 2 Kings 6. And we will read from verse 14 to 17. 2 Kings 6 verse 14 to 17. And at this point here, the king of Aram is going after God's prophet Elisha. He wants Elisha dead. And so he goes in pursuit of Elisha. And so let's pick it up here in 2 Kings 6. And we'll read from verse 14 up to verse 17. The king of Aram sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city of Dothan, which is where Elisha and his servant were. When Elisha's servant got up and went out early the next morning, by the way, men and women of God, they get up early in the morning, all right? And so when Elisha's servant got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Incredible! The prayer that Elisha prayed here in verse 17 is just such a crucial prayer. He says, open his eyes, praying, you know, for the servant, to God, praying for his servant. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. I think this is one of the most important things that we can pray for, for God to open our eyes, for God to open the eyes of those around us, open the eyes of those we love, for God to open our eyes so that we may see. So that we may see His power, His protection, His promises, His provision, His prominence, His preeminence. We need our eyes to be open and see that 
our sisters and brothers here in the church, our sisters and brothers in Christ, that together we are friends, we are a fellowship, and we are a family. And tonight I want to talk about family. I believe the central region is, is talking about family. And so the title of the message is, Open Our Eyes, That We May Be the Family of God. Let's look in Proverbs 27, verse 17. Proverbs 27, verse 17. And it says here, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. I dare say the writer was not leaving out the women, and so a sister too is born for a time of adversity. A friend is always there for you. A brother or a sister will stand by with you in happy times and in hard times. That's what it means to be a family. And my sisters and my brothers, that is what you and I are called by God to be. Bear with me as I ask the obvious. Have you been through any hard times lately? Have you faced adversity or difficulty? Has anyone around you been through any challenges recently? Has anyone around you faced troubles, tragedy, or temptation? Have any of your sisters and brothers here in the central region been through any hardship recently? My guess is that the answer is yes. For me, the answer is a big yes. COVID has brought with it a whole catalog of challenges. And I think it's safe to say that every single one of us has been affected. The thing is though, even before COVID, we had hardships and challenges. And even when the pandemic is over, when the World Health Organization no longer classifies this as a pandemic, and they say that we can move on, there still will be difficulties, challenges, and hardships. Allow me to say this, as a woman of God, as a man of God, with every challenge you ever face, with every obstacle that ever stands in your way, with every intimidation and situation that you ever encounter, remember this one thing, and don't let it go. Just as Elisha told his servant, those who are with us, are more than those who are with them. Always remember that he who is with you is greater than anything that will ever stand against you. And with every challenge that your sister faces, with every obstacle that ever stands in your brother's way, with every intimidation and situation, that the sisters and brothers around you here in the central region will ever encounter prayerfully they will have someone who loves them at those times. We can't all be there for everyone, but each of us can be there for someone. When we maintain unity in times of adversity, we remain as a ministry and we grow to be a family, just as we have been called by God. Last year, around March, April, May, as uh, the pandemic took on uh, a new scope uh, here in the U.S., the region here where I live, the uh, wider metropolitan New York City area, which covers New York City, some parts of New Jersey, including where I live, um, and, and, and a few other states like Connecticut, this was the global epicenter of the pandemic. And I remember, you know, every day just, you know, turning on the TV and watching the news. So, so we're in lockdown, we're, we're at home, you know, we weren't going to work. Uh, so everything was just at home and it was home and TV almost. And every day just watching the news, you know, trying to be informed, trying to stay abreast of what was happening. It was just the, for me, the most terrifying thing that I was seeing. Body bags, body bags and body bags. In intensive care units of hospitals 
were just burst beyond what they could handle. There was not enough space in all the mortuaries of this area to handle all the bodies. Lorries were brought, long lorries, usually for transporting long distance cargo. Those were brought in as stand-in mortuaries and bodies were just being stacked one after the other, after the other, as these lorries were lined up. And that's what I was seeing on TV every single day. I was terrified. And at that time, I really appreciate sisters and brothers around me. And, you know, starting with the, the leadership group that my wife and I have here in the singles ministry, and I just shared with them, this, 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 this is where I am. I was full of fear. And God bless them. They, you know, different people sent me different scriptures and different passages. People shared things that they had been reflecting on. And I, I, I had, believe me, I had enough material to go through from everything that they shared with me. I read through those scriptures. I prayed through those scriptures. And at the end of it, I was able to stand. I was able to have some peace. But only because the sisters and brothers loved me at that time. Again, you know, around the same time, you know, it was locked down and we're all trying to figure out what's going on. And, you know, we're all you know, in the house together and there's all sorts of tension and uncertainty. We had a situation in, in, in my home. And, you know, a few things, you know, took place. And, you know, my, my, my son, who you saw earlier in the picture, he, a few things happened and, you know, he, between him and then, you know, my wife and I, and, and things, were, things were a mess. There was a crisis. And again, same thing. You know, I sent out WhatsApp messages and SMSs and just to different brothers and just sisters, just saying, this is where I am. This is what's happening. And I'm so thankful for sisters and brothers. Some said, we'll be praying for you. Others made time to get with me on the phone, to sit with me on the park, social distant, with our, with our face masks. One brother came from a, a huge distance to sit down together with my family, outdoors, in the park, social distance, and talk through the whole situation with us and help us to reach a point of peace. And I learned so much through that. First of all, I learned to sacrifice because I barely had the courage to go anywhere Yet this brother came at distance to be with my family. And I also got to learn some lessons about where I really was not being the parent that I needed to be. I wasn't being the father that I needed to be. I wasn't being as supportive as I needed to be. And the great thing is I had sisters and brothers who were friends who loved me at that time. And I really believe that, you know, to create family, and, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is that to create family, it's important that we are there for each other in those difficult times. And so let's be looking to see how we can help each other. Let us be intentional in looking out for each other and seeing how we can be there for each other and help others to be assured and not anxious, to have hope and not be hard pressed, to rise up if they're feeling tempted to give up. One of the Bible talks of the singles, something they decided all on their own. And when I found out about it, I was, I was, I was blown away. I said, I, I, I want to participate. I want to see this. I want to take pictures. And what they decided was, because at that time with lockdown and quarantine, people who were bereaved, people who were sick or had different troubling situations, didn't have a whole lot of encouragement. Because... They, they couldn't have people coming over to their homes. Or, you know, they could not have uh, funerals. There was a point where you couldn't have really a funeral. Uh, later on, then they allowed smaller funerals and then they kept increasing the number. But at one point, you could not even have a funeral if your parent died. And believe me, that was happening. There's one sister whose husband passed away. And there's just no possibility of a funeral. And so what the members of this Bible talk decided is they would, on, over several weekends, so each Sunday they would identify several such homes in the church 
of people who need encouragement. And so what this group would do is people would make, you know, big uh, posters and signs with encouraging messages and, you know, nice pictures and put in some scriptures. They'd let the people know in advance and then they'd go from home to home. So they'd get to the home, they'd call, they'd say, hey, we're here. And then they'd be, and they'd be out there standing with their placards of encouragement and hope and just strengthening. It was just the most amazing thing. And I tip my hat to them because that is what we're talking about. Being there for each other in times of adversity. That is what it means to be family. One thing that we've tried to do in the singles ministry here to keep uh, together as, as, as family uh, during this time, and I'm sure you know, similar things have, have been done in, in the central church, is really to have events that keep us connected. So, for example, the New York church once a month has a devotional for all the singles throughout the New York church. But apart from that, we in New Jersey, we have our own devotional for the singles where we can have an event that meets our needs and speaks to where we are and we can get intimately involved. Of course, it was virtual. But you know what? Even when we're virtual, even when we're digital, we can be powerful. And that's what we did. We stayed connected. Then we also had a, a talent show. That was a whole lot of fun with the different acts. And what we did then, we put the word out actually across the country to singles ministries right across the U.S., and uh, different people contributed different uh, wonderful acts. There was song, there was dance, there was rap. There was just a whole host of, of talent. And just, again, putting that event together to keep us all connected and encouraged. The Bible talks were consistent in continuing to meet. Again, all this was online. But it was keeping us together. It was keeping that family connection. We had prayer evenings. We had prayer chains. And then for some people, you know, singles who live alone, uh, some volunteers made sure to reach out to them, to know how they were doing, and to make sure that those people who live alone were not lonely, but that instead they had fellowship. And then another thing, and this didn't just happen in New Jersey or in New York. I heard about the same thing happening in congregations all over the world is that there were a lot more people wanting to study the Bible than previously. And, and, and that happened to us. Even people who had previously studied the Bible but then weren't interested or were not making time, they were available now. And that was another thing that really kept us connected was being in Bible studies together, holding out the word of truth. And it was incredibly encouraging to see numerous women and men getting baptized and also being restored in their faith. Right here is one sister's testimony about the Bible talk that she leads. And uh, so she's single. She leads a single lady's Bible talk. And this is a clip from a recent singles devotional. Her name is Beverly. You know, back in December 2019, around Christmas time, a dear sister, I'm going to call her out right now. She knows this. Sia Manjo was restored to her faith. She left the fellow went church hopping for many years. She tried desperately to bring discipleship wherever she went. She wanted to try to bring it to this church and they rejected that teaching. When I asked Sia, why do you want to get restored to our faith? She simply said, they weren't practicing discipleship. Amen. We love Sia. We are so grateful that she's back with us. You know, then in 2020, the pandemic came. And God opened the doors for Bible studies to happen via Zoom and WhatsApp. Thank God for technology. And with this technology, we were able to actually see blessings in the pandemic via WhatsApp. We got to study the Bible with a friend of ours, Claire Goodchild. She was baptized in June 2020. And a friend of ours who we tried to get with, with so many times to study the Bible, but she was never available. I called up a dear sister. I said, you know what? <laughs> We're in the pandemic. 
let's try to see if she can get together. And when we called her, she was so grateful and so excited. And she is the one that set up the Zoom calls so that we can study the Bible with her. She's baptized today. Her name is Denise Blackwood. She was baptized in July, 2020. Then a dear friend of ours, a married sister, was studying the Bible with a, a single lady. And she invited some of the gardeners to participate. She, she became a Christian. She was baptized. Her name was Penny Simone. You know, unfortunately, we lost a member of the gardeners in November, 2020. Her name was Thelma Bellin. Thelma passed away. We mourn her loss. She will always be missed. You know, we face additional challenges and pain during this pandemic. When members lost close relatives to COVID-19 and to other health issues, we, we mourn with them as well. One of the sisters after the passing of her dad went on to study the Bible with her mother and her mom was baptized in October, 2020. You know, even through these losses, these sisters did not give up their faith. They remained faithful and they put their trust in God and continued in their faith. How encouraging. And in fact, since that sharing, this dynamic group of single women has additionally helped one more lady, her name is Tammy, to get baptized, to make Jesus Lord and get baptized. And so the family is growing all to God's glory. Continually, my brothers and sisters, we're asking God to open our eyes and see how we can be there for each other, how we can be more and more a family that honors God and glorifies Him. That's our hope. That's our prayer. And I believe that we share that same vision, us here in New Jersey and all of you in the amazing central region there. Let us pray for each other. And in all things, let us be family to God's glory. Prayers and best wishes to all my brothers and sisters from the central region. May God continue to keep you and bless you. I wish to send up my prayer and the best wishes to the brothers and sisters at the Johannesburg Church of Christ. May God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate this opportunity. I have you more on my hearts now than ever before, and we will continue praying for each other. God bless. Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ndate Osanya. Uh, I guess in your language, you would say Asante Sana, Rafiki Osanya. Uh, we also want to say thank you, a special thank you to the uh, different disciples whom we were able to share from the New Jersey Church. Uh, thank you so much for your inspiring stories, for your words of encouragement and uh, for the greetings, for the special greetings that you guys did for us right at the beginning uh, of the service uh, uh, up top. Uh, let's close out with a word of prayer. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we truly want to just thank you so much just for your love for us, for how much you truly inspired us through the word, through your word, Father. Thank you for using uh, the New Jersey City Church uh, uh, in an amazing way. Thank you for using them to be able to inspire us. Uh, thank you for using them to be able to encourage us. Uh, Father, we truly need to open our eyes even as uh, Baba Osanya was preaching this evening, just about opening our eyes towards uh, your kingdom, uh, just your church. What we have is special. And Father, we pray that uh, in our lives, we'll always look up to you, to the things that you are doing, even in our own lives. We pray, God, that we may be able to inspire others as well and encourage them to be able to realize and open their eyes towards what you are doing and how big your churches. We ask and we pray in gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's please have a great, great evening. Amen. <laughs>